In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up your PM task lists. I'll start by going to the yellow background oil can. This instruction assumes you've already looked at the video regarding configuring task groups and tasks. Remember, tasks or short task descriptions are used by the PM system as well as the work order system. Okay, so I'm going to go to tab number three, task packages. You'll notice it says optional. Okay, we'll come back to this one. Job list templates, again, optional. Yeah, we'll, we'll mention this one. Probably will not train on it in this video. Okay, so I go to tab number five, preventive maintenance task lists. From this screen, I'll click the edit button. I'll choose the equipment that I want to create the PM list for. And let me see if I can find one that doesn't have anything on it. Here we are, granulator number two. First off, notice this vertical line. It's rather faint, but there is a vertical line here. The left half contains the equipment to add the task to, the start date or initialize date for the PM, who we're going to assign the PM to. The right side contains three boxes that will be the drop downs you'll use for adding the tasks to this equipment. Once you have an equipment, one or more tasks with an interval, a person assigned and a start date, you then have a PM. All right, so to create our first PM for the granulator number two, I'm going to start by selecting a task. Now you may remember from the previous video, you can use the filter if you'd like. So in this case, let's just go ahead and do that. We'll pick conveyor tasks, and this simply loads tasks for conveyors. So we want to check the carrier chain and sprockets every, we'll say, weekly. We click Save, and we now have a PM task list. So we can verify this by going to the gray oil can. This is where we close out our PMs and issue PMs. And I'm going to begin by filtering by the granulator number two. Okay, so we can just see what we have in here. Okay, so this is a very simple PM list. I can bring it up in a print preview, and you can see there's not a whole lot here. But it is a checklist. It has your task, your equipment, who it's assigned to in the interval, as well as the start date and the due date. The due date is calculated by adding the interval in days to the start date. More on this later. Okay, let's go back to configuration. So I'm going to go back to my yellow background oil can, and I can continue adding tasks like this, and that's fine, but I'm doing them one at a time, so this could be a bit cumbersome. So this is where the task packages and the job list templates come in. And we also have a new feature in MainSmart 4.1 that provides a way for you to copy the entire contents of a PM list onto another PM list. So let's see how this works. I'm going to pick a task package. Now a task package is a group of tasks with intervals. By itself, you cannot assign a task package. A task package is a building block to help you build your PM task list quickly. So let's just suppose we had this 30-day chain PM, we called it chain 30, and we want to apply that to the granulator number two. We can choose that, and when we click Save, MateSmart will add all those tasks to this PM all at once. And we can continue like that. Maybe we have another one, conveyor belt every seven days. If we're not sure what's in that task package, an easy way to tell is click the View button, 
and these will be the tasks and the intervals that will be added. Now if there are duplicates in here uh, that are already on this particular PM list, MateSmart will ignore them so you don't have to worry about that. Now I'll click Save. Now suppose we added this conveyor belt 7 task package but after we did so we realized well we don't really need this or this. We can simply hold down the control key left mouse click the row thereby selecting those two PM tasks and then click delete and that will get rid of those. Okay so we have the short task description or task header that we've added and some intervals. We have a person to assign to and a start date. Well, let's go back and look at our PM list. Well it looks the same but I'm going to refresh it by right clicking. I pick refresh and this reloads the PM list. You can see it's starting to look like something. We can do the same thing with our print preview of that PM list by refreshing it and it loads all the new PMs. Okay, let's go back to our PM configuration. Okay, from this screen we can also link details to these PMs. To do so, I select a row, click on the details button, and I get my details screen. Now I can start typing here, number one, and I can do this sort of thing. Um, I could also copy and paste. I could drag and drop uh, from various documents that will allow you to drag from them. Most web pages will. So if you have a manual uh, that's a PDF or a web page, you can select the text and drag it out and drop it right in here. Once you have a set of details, you can save them as an SOP and then reuse them. So how would we do this? We go to the file, open, we go all the way down, we have some sample details in here, a lube SOP, we open it, and it overwrote what we had in there. In order to av avoid overwriting what you have, you can go in there and instead of picking open, as I just did, pick append. And append will add more SOPs onto the end of this. So we're building a detailed instruction list here for whatever PM we have selected. Okay, so once we have this we can click the OK button and don't forget to click the Save button and now those details should be on that particular PM. So if we go back to our print preview screen and refresh it, we'll see that there they are. Now these details can be up to two gigabytes of text per record, which is virtually unlimited. Okay, back to our PM configuration. All right, to complete this video, and this is going to be a two-part, uh, to complete this first part of it, I'm going to show you how to copy one PM list onto another. So I start by clicking the Edit button. Now I could pick granulator number three. Okay, this is the equipment I'm adding task two. In order to copy the granulator number two PM list onto granulator number three, I will select the radio button that says PM list. Then I'll choose my granulator number two. And this is actually listing all of my PM lists. I'll click save and now I have another PM list for granulator number three identical to granulator number two and I can continue and I've done number three and four and so on so you can see this can go really fast once you get uh, at least one PM list created for a specific type of equipment okay this concludes part one of PM configuration in part two, I'll get into task packages, job list templates, and some other details, including uh, setting up sequences.